cultural heritage is a unique resource for knowing about history, memory and the identity of peoples. The illicit trafficking of cultural objects causes serious and sometimes irreversible damage to this common legacy. From Slovenia to Turkey, from Croatia to Romania, looting and illicit traffic of cultural property across southeastern Europe threatens to deprive humanity of a tremendously rich and diversified heritage. I believe that uh, southeastern Europe uh, uh, has passed through a difficult uh, period, uh, political transition, uh, and also the wars uh, that uh, we saw in, uh, in former Yugoslavia had, uh, uh, I would say, a devastating effect on uh, different types of criminal activities, including uh, illicit trafficking of cultural objects, uh, and also uh, because it's a region where we have uh, seen uh, a rich uh, uh, heritage uh, in terms of archaeological discoveries or uh, religious uh, objects uh, trafficking. The greatest damage is sustained by the local communities. Losing their cultural heritage, they lose part of their history and identity. Certain categories of cultural property, such as ritual objects or ancestral remains, are irrevocably identified by reference to the context for which they were created. Looting destroys the context of the find and its historical record. The return of stolen objects to their places of origin is therefore crucial to restore their cultural and spiritual value. The head of Asclepius, stolen in 1991 from the Butrint Archaeological Museum and found in Italy after 18 years, has been returned to Albania and will be transferred back to its original context. When an object is detached from its context, it means nothing. It can serve no purpose at all. The illicit traffic of cultural objects is not only a destructive act against the identity of peoples and countries, it's also a crime against the law that can be severely punished. National and international police operations are bringing to justice a rising number of perpetrators. However, full success in the fight against these crimes is still far to come. Cultural goods in southeastern Europe continue to be exposed to theft and illicit trade. Archaeological sites in a precarious state encourage unauthorized excavations. Museums, places of worship and many underwater cultural sites have equally fallen prey to heavy pillage. In addition, with the new information and communication technologies, the art market has expanded considerably, thus increasing forgeries and frauds, as well as illicit sales on internet commerce. An increasingly sophisticated criminal system has evolved to circumvent national laws and international conventions and to bypass customs controls. Routes of illicit traffic are often difficult to trace. When law is lacking, ignored or not effectively enforced, we must struggle harder and ring the alarm whenever the cultural heritage is in urgent need of protection. Action to combat illicit trafficking is a fundamental part of UNESCO's endeavour to protect the cultural heritage. All the countries from southeastern Europe have ratified the 1970 UNESCO Convention on the means of prohibiting and preventing the illicit import, export and transfer of ownership of cultural property. This convention is the first international legal instrument adopted to combat trafficking in cultural objects in times of peace. It sets out specific and mandatory principles of protection, in particular against theft, looting and restitution. Efforts have also intensified in recent years to improve national legislations. Countries have enacted special laws on the protection of cultural goods and adopted provisions to prevent trafficking, such as the creation of national registers of cultural goods, limitations of the trade, export and import of cultural goods, and the supervision and licensing of archaeological excavations. 
These legislations can now be shared through the UNESCO database of national cultural heritage laws. The rich underwater cultural heritage of the Adriatic Sea and the southeastern European inland water basins is also part of our shared legacy. Joining the 2001 UNESCO Convention on the Protection of the Underwater Cultural Heritage will serve to fight the destruction, looting and illicit exploitation of these treasures. Furthermore, the 1954 Hague Convention on the Protection of Cultural Property in the Event of Armed Conflict, as well as the 1995 Unidroit Convention on Stolen or Illicitly Exported Cultural Property, add to the available preventive and reactive measures. I think that the most effective means of combating international trafficking in art objects is for states to work together. Now, this implies cooperation among police forces. The signing of conventions such as the 1970 UNESCO Convention and of bilateral agreements between states to combat illicit traffic can indeed convince collectors and museums to stop purchasing works of art on the black market. Further to the ratification of international conventions, countries must enforce these legal instruments and create effective mechanisms to prevent and fight the illicit trafficking of cultural property. Accessibility to data and information sharing, such as the establishment of national databases on cultural property comprising standardized descriptions and photographs, can pose effective barriers to criminal activities. We are trying to create a database in collaboration with the police for stolen objects. Uh, we are also trying to digitize all our collections, private and public, and we have started digitizing collections of uh, museums. Confirming the importance of international cooperation, the inclusion of a stolen cultural object into the Interpol's online database makes its illicit sale more difficult and facilitates its recovery. Similarly, the training of professionals such as the police force, the judiciary and customs employees, as well as the creation of specialised investigative and law enforcement units have a fundamental importance. Simple and clearly visible measures, like the establishment of this free phone number for reporting cases of illicit appropriations and trafficking, are also proving very effective. Unfortunately. In most cases after a theft, the police services cannot do their job properly because there isn't sufficient documentation, such as photographs or an accurate description. That is one aspect. Then, of course, the means must be provided at the national level to improve market monitoring. Self-regulation is the best way. This means having, for example, codes of ethics for art dealers forbidding the purchase of objects of unidentified origin, and of course, for museums too. Interpol actively assists such institutions in carrying out this work, for example, by giving them access to our database. Far from being only a matter limited to professional criminals or private collectors, the illicit trafficking of cultural objects may also concern the non-responsible behaviour of tourists, public officers and local populations. Awareness, therefore, must be raised at all levels, from the professionals to the wider public, especially the young, in order to build the early warning capacity of all stakeholders. We take children to archaeological sites. We show them how a proper excavation is being carried out. The children help us one uh, day when they are able to come with their schools and they understand how the excavation takes place, how the journal is being done, the photographing, all the documenting of a proper uh, excavation and then they see 
uh, the pits that the looters op open uh, in certain sites and there they understand how much is lost. We are trying to make the public aware uh, that uh, removing objects from their contexts or buying objects from uh, the internet for instance without checking their provenance uh, is uh, a dangerous and um, damaging. Um, action towards the preservation of our cultural heritage. Finally, the protection of cultural sites and museums must be improved by means of preventive measures against theft or fire in locations at risk, such as video surveillance and alarm systems. U svakom slučaju među brojnim mjerama koje su sigurno dovele do te situacije da danas imamo manji broj krađa mogu ovaj navesti pojačanu izradu evidencije fotografija najvrijednijih inventara edukaciju vlasnika kako se zaštititi od provale i pljačke od nekih najelementarnijih mjera tehničke zaštite do vrlo razvijene službe zaštite i kontrole hidroarheoloških lokaliteta zajedno opet sa policijom The official return of stolen or illicitly traded cultural objects is always a source of intense national pride. Recovered objects become once again part of the collective memory, making this process a fundamental part of our endeavor to protect cultural heritage. As a result of mediation and bilateral agreements, a large number of cultural items have been successfully recovered and restored to southeastern Europe. In 2007, Romania was able to recover 15 magnificent Dacian golden bracelets stolen from archaeological sites in Sarmice Guca. Bracelets were seized in the USA, France, Germany and Romania, and the offenders imprisoned. In November 2010, over 350 coins, jewellery and human figurines dating from Roman and Byzantine times seized by Canadian border authorities were officially returned to Bulgaria. In March 2011, over 1,800 cultural objects, including numismatic and archaeological materials, were returned by Serbian authorities to Turkey. The objects were seized by the Serbian police during custom controls, and their return was the occasion for an official visit to Serbia by the Minister of Culture and Tourism of Turkey. UNESCO encourages and facilitates the restitution of illicitly exported cultural objects. The UNESCO Intergovernmental Committee for promoting the return of cultural property to its countries of origin or its restitution in case of illicit appropriation as a conciliation and mediation body today provides the main international framework for advocacy and negotiations. We know the responsibilities. We have uh, our organization bears uh, uh, the prime responsibility because we are the guardian of, uh, of this convention equally as the uh, convention of uh, 1954 and the different uh, the two protocols uh, uh, on the trafficking of, of arts in armed conflicts. We have seen in many cases in the world and we have been very, I would say also, instrumental uh, in, uh, in such difficult cases in the world like uh, uh, Iraq or Afghanistan or recently also in Haiti uh, to create the conditions for uh, a strong international cooperation in preventing uh, uh, such illicit trafficking. And uh, I believe that by uh, leading once again um, this strong international campaign and effort to strengthen the Convention of 1917 to see how we can uh, move also with other stakeholders into uh, preventing such trafficking, we'll be living up also to uh, our responsibilities. Cultural heritage constitutes an inalienable part of a people's sense of self, functioning as a link between the past, the present and the future. To combat international trafficking in cultural property is to promote due respect for this cultural heritage and for its rightful depositories. Each one of us, tourist, professional, decision maker 
or common citizen must play his or her part. <laughs>